Uh, I'm Richard Larison, the CEO here at Chase Brexton Healthcare. We'd like to thank you all for being here this morning and welcome you to our new facility. This is a consolidation of three buildings that we had in the Mount Vernon area now come together. So all of Chase Brexton uh, here in Mount Vernon is all in one location with some extra space uh, along with that. So we officially opened our doors just two weeks ago and I would like to welcome back uh, the mayor who joined us for our ribbon cutting and I'd also like to welcome Health Commissioner Barbeau and Healthcare Access Maryland CEO Kathleen Westcote. Thank you, welcome. I thought I'd open today by just saying a few miles down the road there is an intense debate that's taking place about the value of accountable care bill passed by Congress in 2009. And so while we respect everyone's right to have an opinion, I want it to be very, very clear that in this house, um, there is no debate. Um, accountable care is a major step forward in granting many of the disenfranchised citizens of Maryland access to health, health care quality, quality health care, many of them for the very first time. Since October 1, we've already seen a number of people taking advantage of these new opportunities, but there is still much work to be done. We need to keep working in the community to spread the word and to educate people about options. So we're thrilled to be working with Healthcare Access Maryland and Maryland Health Connection to reach the rest of the people in the area who lack insurance. Together, together we can make a significant difference in the lives of our neighbors. With that, I'd like to introduce Kathleen Westcote, President and CEO of Healthcare Access Maryland. Kathleen has been at the helm of HCAM since 2004, helping people to enroll in public health care and navigate the health care system. I'm proud to be a partner with, with HCAM as we educate and assist the uninsured Baltimore residents in accessing new health care insurance options. Thank you. Kathleen. Thank you so much, Richard, for that lovely introduction, and thank you for hosting this event at your beautiful building. Um, and thank you, Mayor and Dr. Barbeau, for joining us on this very important day. As many of you know, October 1st marked a very exciting time in healthcare in our country, in our state, and in our city. In the state of Maryland, there are currently 800,000 people who are uninsured, with 100,000 of them residing in Baltimore City. It's really been an amazing journey, really um, very much like a soap opera if you've been following this all along. Uh, the Affordable Care Act was signed into law by President Obama in um, March of 2010, and it's really been a true wi uh, a wild ride ever since. Immediately after the law was signed, we are very, very lucky to live here in the state of Maryland. Um, state officials pushed forward despite all of the opposition, despite um, the, the law being put before the Supreme Court to uh, assess whether it was constitutional or not, and despite over 40 bills being passed to the Senate um, trying to repeal or defund Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act. So um, I'm very happy to be standing before you today. And despite all of the opposition and despite all of the political posturing, we are here to implement the Affordable Care Act. And for those of you that do not know, Healthcare Access Maryland is the connector entity for the central region, which includes Baltimore City, Baltimore County, and Anne Arundel County. And within that area, there's about 220,000 people who are uninsured. Healthcare Access Maryland and its partners will ensure that the Affordable Care Act is implemented and thousands of city residents will be enrolled within uh, the first couple years of, of the law. Healthcare Access Maryland is not able to do this alone. That's why we have partnered with many entities in Baltimore City to help us enroll people into uh, the health insurance exchanges as well as expanded Medicaid. And many of them are here today. Obviously, Richard from Chase Brexton, Kevin Lindemood from Healthcare for the Homeless, Alma Roberts from Healthy Start, obviously the health commissioner who represents the Baltimore City Health Department who will help us. Our partnerships are incredibly important to us. We need help and assistance in being able to enroll people into these programs. Um, I think it's really important for everybody to understand who is eligible for this program. There's lots of misinformation going on right now, so everybody here today, if you 
if there's one take home for you, just listen to the following. If you are enrolled in Medicare, you do not need to do anything. If you are enrolled in Medicaid, you do not need to do anything. If, you're, if you have employer-based health insurance, you do not need to do anything. If you are enrolled in the primary adult care program, you do not need to do anything. You will automatically enroll into full Medicaid in 2014. If you are uninsured, you do need to do something. We have people who are here today who can help you work through your options. In Maryland, we did decide to expand the Medicaid program from 116% of federal poverty level to 138% of federal poverty level. So what that means is a single individual who earns $16,000 a year or less can qualify for free health insurance. Or if you are between 100% and 400% of federal poverty level, you can qualify for subsidies on the health insurance exchange. We have navigators here today who can assist you, um, work through your options, and help you determine what you are eligible for. I would also, before I introduce the mayor, like to thank the, the talented Health Care Access staff who is here today. One, uh, Sheila McIntosh, who is our vice po president of Health Policy Initiatives. She is really the person behind formulating all the partnerships, writing the RFP, working with our legislators to make sure that this is implemented effectively here in Maryland. Tracy Kodak, our Vice President of Programs, who is here. Marion Calloway, our Director of Communications, and her team who has pulled not only this event together, but many, many others. So uh, just thank you for the enormous amount of dedication that it took to, to get this off the ground. So next, I would like to introduce Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake, who I know is very, very excited about health care reform in her city. Again, 100,000 people will likely qualify for health insurance, and she has been very supportive as a mayor and has been very supportive in ensuring that health care access um, will implement the Affordable Care Act in a, um, in a meaningful way. So. Thank you very much, Kathy, Richard, uh, Dr. Barbeau, Kevin, Alma. Thank you all, or all of our partners, for being here today. Today is a great day for any American who has had to struggle with getting access to quality, affordable health care for their families or their children. And just think about that when you think about the ridiculous debate that's going on in D.C. This is about making sure that people who cannot afford health care have access to quality, affordable health care. For families, for those families, the Affordable Care Act means you now have that access. It means you no longer have to fear bankruptcy because the loved one got sick or chose between putting food on the table and buying medication. And you know, I I, I am very burned up about the, the the shutdown and all that foolishness. But it, because it, when you think about all of the misinformation and the tricks and the foolishness, you know, the, there's some that are trying to convince young people not to sign up. For afford for the um, you know affordable health care, uh, health insurance. Oh, you're young. Uh, you don't have to worry about anything. Nobody plans to get into a car accident. No one plans to get a serious illness. If you're a young person and you opt out of this system and you don't have any safety net, you're setting yourself up. You know, once those uh, bills start to come in for health care costs that are skyrocketing and you can't afford them, it's too late at that point. And, you know, and where are those people that are giving you the bad information at that point? Are they going to come in, you know, like knights on, uh, on a white horse and pay the medical bills then because they, they listened to you and opted out? No. And it, it is simply disgraceful to me that we're, the, in efforts uh, to play politics, we're encouraging young people to be to, to not be responsible for their medical health and their financial well-being. So the fact that you no longer have to fear bankruptcy because you have that uh, affordable care option is, is great news for more than 80,000 Baltimore citizens who right now lack access to quality health care. Despite that exciting prospect, you know, it, it does burn me up that there are too many people rooting for this to fail, rooting for the bill to fail, rooting for this system uh, to fail, imagine that people wanting the results. What happens when people don't have affordable health care? People go untreated, they get sick, they die, they put themselves in financial uh, jeopardy for nothing. We have the best health care in the world, 
Yet we have, you know, the, a, a young boy dying because of a, of a, a toothache. We can do better and we must do better. You know, the, the beauty of America is that no amount of politics can trump the spirit of the American people who set their sights on a goal. And the early results of the Affordable Care Act is that Americans want the access that the Affordable Care Act offers. A Kaiser Family Foundation poll found that nearly 80% of Americans favor the health care insurance exchanges. Uh, favor subsidies that help individuals purchase insur insurance and favor the expansion of Medicaid. These are all the components of the Affordable Care Act that will help to make sure these families have access uh, to health care all across Baltimore and our state. And for me, this is more than, a, than numbers and polls. It's about fighting for what's right for every citizen in this city to be able to get access to quality, affordable health care. I encourage each and every one of you to spend time finding out what you can do to spread the right information. What you can do, many of you are, are helping people navigate through the system, and I, I'm extremely grateful for that. But please, please don't listen to the naysayers who are basing their opinion more on what the, the president signed into law instead of what is what the actual legislation can do for families. Take time to visit the website. Speak to a professional who can help you make the best choice for yourself and for your family. Again, thank you to everyone who is in the trenches making sure that uh, families across Baltimore have access to ba basic health care. Uh, now, I would like to turn it over to my health commissioner who is on a mission to make Baltimore a healthier city, Dr. Barbeau. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for those inspiring words. Um, it is a pleasure to be here on this um, podium, really at a very momentous time. It's a landmark time for health care in Baltimore um, and really for the opportunities it presents for health care outcomes in Baltimore cities uh, and the opportunities available for individuals who are currently uninsured for their families as well as for the opportunities uh, for small business owners. As was mentioned earlier, under the Affordable Care Act, there will be a substantial number of people currently without health insurance who will be eligible to be insured right here in Baltimore City. And in fact, we estimate that it's roughly 14% of the population of Baltimore City. And those are significant numbers. And as we all know, uh, and have heard in the news, there have been technical challenges with the Exchange online site, but the reality is that folks are working night and day to get people insured and, and enrolled, and we have currently uh, roughly three to 400 people that have been enrolled. And the way that I look at it is, this is a huge endeavor, and if there weren't problems, I would be worried because where are all the people who are uninsured and need to access this service? So the way that I look at it, it really is the pent up need that has been existing in our city and the, the need and the outcry that our citizens are um, ex, ex, um, I get excited and emotional about this because it really is a matter of life and death for a lot of our families the way that Madam Mayor has um, outlined. And so it's a pleasure to be here with Kathy and her staff as the leaders of the Navigator entity who are on the ground in partnership with various organizations throughout the city, leaving no stone unturned to ensure that our families get insured. And so for every one of us here today, it's important to spread the word, how it is that we can access the um, opportunities available through the health insurance exchange. Because really, it's um, an opportunity that hasn't come around for over 40 years. Last time that there was a significant expansion in access to health care was when Medicaid and Medicare would pass back in the mid-60s. And not since then have the doors opened so widely for so many in our country. And in Baltimore, the goal is clear, to make sure that health insurance opens the doors to access to quality care and to preventive services. One of our priority areas within Healthy Baltimore 2015 is to ensure that we promote access to quality health care for all. 
because that's the first and most important step to ensuring that we improve health outcomes in our cities, in our city. And so this opportunity presents individuals the opportunity to access the core benefits that all health plans must offer, which include payment for doctor's visits, hospitalizations, emergency care, maternity care, pediatric care, prescriptions, medical tests, mental health care, substance abuse treatment, and more. And most importantly, coverage for preventive services free of charge. And that really, I can't emphasize that enough. Um, and so at this point, I want to ensure that, um, since I want to make sure that we stay on time, that um, we emphasize the fact that our staff at the health department have been very working very closely with Kathy, with Alma, with Kevin and others to ensure that we utilize our staff and our resources as well to make sure that we spread the word and that we have opportunities for people to sign up. And so we're working through programs in our school health program, in our infants and toddlers programs, at our clinics because each one of us plays a role in ensuring that the word gets out and that people understand the benefits and that prevention not only applies to the screening tests that we get, but also to ensuring that we access health insurance. And this is a tremendous opportunity. So I am looking forward to January 1st, 2014, when all of this kicks into action. I also want to remind folks that the enrollment period extends all the way through till March. Um, so if you're having difficulties accessing the site right now, fret not because you have until March and we encourage everyone to enroll. So at this point, I turn it back to Kathy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam Mayor and Dr. Barbeau. Dr. Barbeau has um, also shown great leadership in the city. She's a Healthcare Access Board member and um, has her Healthy Baltimore 2015, on which the Affordable Care Act weaves very nicely within health, the Health Care Access goal. So um, I wanted to finish, and I, I left out a very important fact earlier. Um, the state of Maryland, once again, has has been a leader not only with expanding Medicaid, but creating our own health insurance exchanges, unlike many other states. But in addition to that, they have implemented a very robust navigator program. So in the state of Maryland, there's approximately $24 million that are available um, across the state for a robust navigator program. Healthcare Access Maryland and its partners have hired 107 people who will be deployed to a variety of locations and, and um, community-based organization. So it's very important to leave you with this message. If you know somebody that needs health care insurance, please have them visit the MarylandHealthConnection.gov website. Um, individuals can also call us directly if they are in the central region. Um, and if they want to talk to a navigator in person, they can pull up our schedule, which is on our website, which shows where our navigators are Monday through Saturday, the times, the hours, and the location. So um, anyway, thank you all so very much for coming today. Help us spread the word. We will not, we will not, um, we're going to move forward no matter what's happening, and we're very proud to be here. And uh, Healthcare Access stands with Richard and saying um, we also feel that this, this law is the right thing to do, and um, we are steaming forward despite, despite what's going on. So, thank you. And I don't know if there were any questions from anybody. Can you talk more about the problems that you've been having with the website? Uh, in our webs at our station alone, we've been feeling a lot of calls from frustrated people. Um, and I noticed you say you want to have 280,000 people enrolled in this, um, and, and there's only about 400. Can you talk about those problems? Sure. So um, what I can tell you, there's been an enormous amount of interest um, at the MarylandHealthConnection.gov website. There have been some unexpected technical difficulties due to bottlenecks in the system from the large volume of people who have been trying to get in. Um, we hear from the Maryland Health Connection every day. We, we know that they are working around the clock. And each day that goes by, we have been seeing some system improvements. Um, and talking with our navigators every day, it seems that things are getting easier and better. I don't think we're quite there yet, but we are going to remain patient. 
We are working with customers and having them fill out paper applications, so that is one way around um, using the web portal at this time. But again, Dr. Barbeau stated open enrollment is all the way through March 31st, so there is time. If people weren't able to enroll this week or even next week, there's still plenty of time. Um, and we also think that the enrollments at, during this period would have been relatively low anyway. The products on the exchange, you really need to think about which plan best suits your needs, whether it be a bronze plan or a silver plan or a gold plan. There's really lots to contemplate um, in assessing what your own health care needs are and which plan. So, and which plan you ultimately select. So people really do need a little bit of time to, to look at the products that are before them before they um, actually enroll. And do you think that the, the low numbers right now, if you consider these low numbers, are because of this internet problem? I, I think it's twofold. I think one is the, um, the, the issues with the portal, but I think the other issue is people have likely gone online and looked at the products that are available and just clearly just need some time to sit back and contemplate um, what is available to them before, before signing up. It's a big decision. You know, you're going to be paying a monthly premium. You have to see what fits in your budget. You have to see which plan is best for you, whether you have a chronic health care, care illness or um, perhaps you're a young adult that doesn't need such a robust plan. So there's, there's lots to think through, but I, I think it's twofold. Yes, people across the state, um, and I think the number that Dr. Barbeau, I, I think those are largely from people who have been able to access the web portal and, and sign on by themselves without the assistance of a navigator. Well, people are certainly welcome to call the connector entities. Again, Healthcare Access Maryland is one of six connector entities in the state, so we can certainly help them walk through what is available and, uh, you know. Gotcha. Yeah, um, as far as I know, the, that information is not available online, but I, I think that that is something that's very important, and we'll take that back to the exchange to see if there, there might be a way that they can put that in, make that information available. Yeah, I, th I think fundamentally um, what I've heard from other states, um, the federally facilitated exchange states that are using the, um, the national website have encountered very similar problems. And I, I think it's really largely due to the bottlenecks. I think it's largely due to the tremendous amount of interest of people who are really looking to obtain affordable health care coverage. So it is a phenomenon we're seeing across the country. I think the unexpected bottlenecks are, are really due to an enormous, tremendous amount of interest in these programs. And maybe reporters too. It's our <laughs> I didn't blame you. <laughs> One last request if we could have the mayor and all of our partners stand on the steps for a group photo, that would be terrific.